Mute. Mute. Okay. Mute. Okay. Let's start. Mute. Uh, hello, everyone. Uh, I'm happy to see to see you all. Uh, in the CM uh, CMS AGR seminar. This week we have Dr. C Yuan Ma to have uh, to give a talk about uh, the sharp decay for Tversky equation. Uh, in her space time. Okay, that's welcome. Yeah, okay. Thanks for, uh, thanks for Jelio's invitation. Um, I'm happy to give a talk in this uh, seminar. So um, my talk will be about the sharp decay estimates for the Korsky equation in curved space times. Um, just a moment. So uh, this talk uh, will be will be consisting of uh, three parts. The first part I will give uh, I will just review the sharp decay, the heuristic sharp decay, or the price law. And in the second part, I will show how to derive the sharp decay for scalar wave, for instance. So and uh, I will show how this uh, some some global conservation law plays a role in deriving the sharp asymptotics for the scalar wave. And in the last part, I would go, I go, I would turn to the Stokowski equation and then show you how to, uh, how to get the sharp decay for the Stokowski equation in current space times. Uh -huh. So let's start from the theory of general relativity. So this is like uh, a, a, a three plus one dimensional Lorentz manifold for the with signature minus plus 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 for the metric and satisfy the so-called uh, Einstein equation. And I, I assume everyone is familiar with this equation. And um, I would just uh, consider the vacuum Einstein equation, the rich tensor equal to zero. And in some suitable gauge, uh, everyone knows that it's a quasi-linear wave system. And for this vacuum Einstein equation, so uh, there are some explicit solutions. The most trivial one is the Minkowski spacetime. It's the flight one. And uh, a non-trivial one is the Schwarzschild spacetime the metric being of this form here, and the function mu equals to one minus two m over r, it's spheric symmetric and it's asymptotic flight in the sense it approaches Minkowski near infinity. And in particular, this contains a black hole region which lies inside this r less than two m or corresponding to this mu function less than zero. And last, let, let's, uh, let's talk about the curve spacetime. So th this is actually uh, a family of spacetimes. They are axisymmetric and rotating. And so the metric is a bit complicated here. Uh, the functions delta and sigma are functions of r and r and theta respectively. And it has two parameters, a and m, m being the mass of the black hole, and a is the angular momentum per mass. We only consider the subgenre family of, uh, of the curved spacetimes. This means uh, we assume that the absolute value of A is strictly less than N. Okay. So uh, to introduce uh, the, the so called price law or the Tokorsky equation, uh, we, we should have some definitions for the so called spin S components. So this is, uh, this is actually defined in the newman penrose formalism. So one choose at every point of the space-time a complex now tetrad L, N, M, M bar. M bar is actually the complex conjugate of M. And this, this, this tetrad satisfies some uh, product relations. So in particular, so this uh, inner product L and N, the equal to this equal to minus one and in the product of M and M bar equals to one and the other products being zero. And then uh, the spin S components are just uh, uh, obtained by projecting the, the scalar wave, the scalar field, the Maxwell field and the linearized gravity onto such a null tetrad. Then you get this spin zero plus minus one plus minus two components. So uh, to be more precise, so this spin zero component, upsilon zero, this solves the scalar wave and the spin plus minus one, spin plus minus two, they're defined in this form. They're just uh, defined by projecting the Maxwell tensor. 
this F and the, 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 the Y curvature tensor onto this null tetrad. And in this work, uh, we should fix such a tetrad. So um, we, we choose the so-called cutter corking tetrad. Um, this is by choosing this N direction, this N vector to be uh, aligned with, uh, with the principal null directions of the curved space times. L is also aligned with this one of the principal null directions, but in particular, this N is actually geodetic. And then the rest can be fixed immediately, M and M bar. Um, so the Tokoski equation, or we call it uh, Tokoski master equation or TME. So this is like uh, uh, by, by doing some rescaling for these spin as components, this such uh, funny scaling of uh, these functions are R and theta functions. This psi S, psi plus S frac, psi minus S frac, here S frac is just the, the absolute value of S. This satisfies the so-called Tukowski equation. Um, this is a decoupled equation from the system of uh, equations and they're separable. It's a spin weighted wave equation because these scalars are actually, they're with spin weight. They're actually sections of uh, a, a complex line bounder. So um, what you get is, uh, is of uh, this form. So um, the first line is actually just a, a spin weighted wave equation, a spin weight, sorry, a spin weighted wave operator acting on this psi s. And the rest are some uh, first order derivative terms. Um, so this psi s actually governs the dynamics of the scalar field, Maxwell field, and the linearized gravity. So this, this actually just means that the rest can, can more or less be recovered from the asymptotics or the dynamics of this psi s after you're choosing a gauge, a suitable gauge. Uh, so um, the subject is the subject of this talk is to to achieve the uh, sharp decay. So what what are the motivations? So why why are, why are you concerned with the sharp decay? Um, so uh, from my point of view, so it it is like uh, two folds. Uh, the first part is uh, arises from the black hole exterior region. So in, in particular, the stability problem. So uh, Recently, I mean, the, the current stability conjecture is quite active. And uh, this is like uh, saying, uh, if, you, if, you, if you perturb the initial data a little bit around some current space time, some current initial data, then you look at the, event, the cautious development of this initial data. Eventually, it will approach some, some, some current space times. And to, to, uh, from the past experience, to, to address this conjecture, one has to first understand where about this, uh, some linearizations of this uh, vacuum Einstein equation. In particular, this linearized gravity, that is the Tokoski master equation for this S equal to plus minus two. You have to get, you have to first achieve some upper bound, some sufficiently good upper bounds of decay for these linearizations. And then, you can, you can hope that you can use these uh, decay estimates to control the nonlinear terms. But additionally, you need to explore some good structure in the nonlinear terms. So for instance, the null structure. So uh, this is one motivation to achieve the upper bound of the, uh, of the, of the decay. And the other one is, to, is about the black hole interior region. Uh, we know that for the for the curved space times, there are infinitely many smooth extensions beyond the Hoche horizon. So this actually uh, do not yield any like uh, determinism of this uh, GR theory. And Perros raised a conjecture or hypothesis, the so-called strong cosmic censorship has hypothesis. So if you restrict it to a uh, curved space time then it actually says that uh, given any small perturbations of subtrim curve space time, then eventually you look at the Hoche horizon, it, it still exists and it's generically inextendable in some suitable regularity sense. 
So, um, so then generically, you, you still have determinism for this GR theory. And in particular, the whole curve, Horst horizon should be unstable from if this strong cosmic censorship hypothesis around curve is actually true. And you know that uh, to prove any kind of instability, it's, it's convenient to have some lower, lower bounds for certain things. So for instance, lower bounds for decay. Um, it's, it's actually important to have uh, lower bounds of decay for perturbations on event horizon. Then you can propagate, somehow you can propagate these lower bounds of decay uh, from event horizon to host horizon and eventually achieve some, uh, some inextendability. So uh, overall, that's that's uh, that's my that's somehow the motivation for this uh, sharp decay, and Price actually predicted this sharp decay for the Tokoski equation. Or uh, it's not actually for Tokoski equation because uh, he's actually treating this regular equation, but uh, nevertheless, so this can be adapted uh, to these spin s components. So. Uh, the price law says that uh, for this uh, spin S components on Swatchard or on Rice and North John, uh, the decay, the sharp decay should be as uh, in this table. So um, here actually, so I, I choose this scaling because if actually this, this scalar equals to the upsilon S I defined the, the original spin S components. Uh, if you, if you projecting the the, the field onto the now tetrad. And they have uh, a suitable decay towards now infinity and uh, also in a finite radius region. I, I just want to uh, mention that the total power of decay towards now infinity should be like minus three minus S frac minus L. And in some finite radius region, the, the, the sharp decay uh, should be like minus three, minus two L, L being the mode of this, uh, of this, uh, of this spin S component. So here, uh, I also define this U to be the retarded time and V to be the forward time of the, uh, of the swatch route background. And in Price's law paper, this actually holds I mean, heuristically, this holds for a smooth, compactly supported initial data. And you can see here that for higher modes, so because it has somehow a linear growth in L, so for higher L modes, then uh, higher L means, uh, the higher L modes actually decay faster, right? And additionally, in, in the finite radius region, for any finite L, actually you gain this L minus S frac power in the total power of decay compared to the decay rate towards now infinity. And there are also some uh, uh, numeric uh, and heuristic extensions to occur for this uh, Psi S or Upsilon S. Uh -huh. Okay. So what is the reason that you have such uh, price law or such uh, late time tails for this uh, spin S components for the Tokoski equation? Um, let, me, let me briefly uh, explain it for the scalar wave equation on, on Swatchard. So you know that in Minkowski actually due to the strong Huygens principle, the, for, for, any finite, uh, for any finite R eventually the field will vanish so it will have, uh, yeah, it, it just vanishes for, 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 for the time being sufficiently large. And this is not the case uh, for the, for the black hole backgrounds. The main reason is that you have an, if, an effective curvature potential. This, uh, this is due to, uh, you have non-trivial geometry compared to uh, Minkowski. And then you have some kind of backscattering coming from this potential. So in this figure, you can see that, uh, the radiation actually uh, uh, goes out, and then due to some kind of potential, then some some radiation will be reflected back, and eventually there are some tails towards this i plus the the, the time like infinity. 
So uh, the potential actually already shows in the scalar wave equation. If you write the scalar wave equation in, in terms of the radiation field, this capital Psi or big Psi equal to R Psi, the, the scalar wave equation becomes this, uh, this, uh, this, this minus YV big Psi plus this angular part. And then the, eventually there's the red liberal part is the potential part. And here, this y is just the n, 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 n direction of the now tetrad, and v is the l direction, l being the outgoing, the outgoing now derivative, and n being the ingoing now derivative. Um, right. So uh, let me just remark that uh, towards now infinity or in any finite radius region, actually, the decay rates and the coefficients in front of this decay they're actually in, dependent on both L and the potential the potential here. So if you choose different potential for different equations, then uh, the, the, the coefficient will, will be changed. And if the fall off is different, then the decay rate will change as well. Uh, so let me review some results, some um, the results in the literature about this uh, so-called price law for these uh, spin S components. Uh, you can see here that um, price law for scalar wave, actually it, there are many works and there are few uh, for the Maxwell for the uh, linearized gravity. So in particular, I, I should mention that some recent work of uh, Angelopoulos, Aritakis and Gadget, they actually first uh, in 2018, they showed uh, almost price, also almost sharp decay or almost price law. And then price law for scalar wave on rice and loss John. And then in, uh, in 2020, Peter Hintz, um, he showed uh, the price law for scalar wave on curl space times. And also he, 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 he obtained this sharp decay for any uh, big or equal to L modes on Swatchard. And the uh, Angelopoulos, Aritakis, and Gadget, uh, in this year, they have two papers, and uh, one for this uh, higher modes on, uh, for the scalar wave on rest nostrum, and another paper about this uh, L equal to zero, L equal to one and L big or equal to two modes of the scalar wave on curve. They achieve the price law. And there are also some other results, not, not exactly for scalar wave, but for some other uh, related problems. So for instance, if the potential is uh, decays faster than or decays slower, uh, depending on this uh, power K, then Morgan and Morgan Wunsch, they obtained the sharp decay or almost sharp decay in that case on Minkowski. And to Hanlu, he achieved a sharp decay for semilinear wave equation for this p being uh, being big or equal to three for sufficiently small initial data. And in conclusion, so uh, the price law, the global price law, let's say, it's because this is a global sharp decay in the black hole exterior region. The global price law for the scalar wave and its L mode on both uh, Swatchard and Kerr, they actually understood well and they're proven, but uh, generically, uh, I mean, generally, this is not, this is not clear for this uh, as being non-zero case. Okay, let, let, me, let me then uh, in, uh, discuss uh, how to get the sharp decay for the scalar wave equation. Before doing that, uh, I need to have a, a uh, suitable foliation of uh, the space dam. So we call it a hyperboloid foliation. We recall that the total coordinate R star is defined in this way. And uh, we also define this phi tilt, uh, this phi tilt uh, in terms of this buoyant linguist phi and R. And eventually uh, uh, hyperboloid time function tau is defined such that uh, sigma tau I and mean, constant uh, tau have surfaces here, it transfers to, uh, to the event horizon and it asymptotics to this now infinity. So we call this uh, tau rho theta phi tilt to be the hyperboloid coordinates. And then the wave equation, uh, if you write it in terms of this hyperboloid coordinates, you can immediately see that every, the coefficients are regular 
And uh, let me see a few words about some notations in this figure. So uh, constant tau hypersurfaces are called uh, sigma tau. And the, the region between sigma tau two and sigma tau one is called omega tau one tau two. And then there are some parts, some truncated parts of the event horizon and the now infinity. So um, for the scalar wave equation, uh, one of the starting point is to first achieve the so-called Morawitz estimate or integrated local energy estimate. So uh, we call it uh, bin estimates. This is short for basic energy and the Morawitz estimates because these estimates actually contain two parts, the energy estimate, so a uniform energy, a uniform energy bound, and then the Morawitz, Morawitz part, uh, some, some suitable, uh, some space-time integral of some local energy density is controlled by the initial energy. This is well understood. This is uh, to, to use some multiplies, partial T psi, some Y psi, and then X psi to be the radial derivative acting on psi to, to get this uh, bin estimate. And this already encodes some uh, much of the local information. And the rest is to, uh, how, to how to achieve the I mean, how to retrieve, retrieve the information near infinity. And a very efficient method is, uh, is, is by uh, Daffermus and Ronensky. They developed this RP method or R, they, they derive this RP estimates. So this is to achieve by, uh, this is to multiply this wave equation by, by some multipliers, this minus two R to the P weight V psi and then you, you get such an identity or formula um, by isolating this uh, derivative part, total derivative part, and then some uh, bulk terms. So if you integrate in this uh, omega tau one tau two, the space time region, then the first line actually uh, gives some uh, uh, flux on some hypersurfaces. And then the second line is some space time integral and you can see that for P positive, this term, this term is fine. And this term is fine for P less than uh, three. And the most important thing is uh, for this angular part, angular derivative part, uh, it requires P to be less than two, such that this is positive definite. So this is a restriction uh, uh, such that you can only achieve these estimates in principle for P between zero and two. And for P between, in this range, you can get some, uh, some similar estimates as this bin estimates. So some energy part, energy estimate, and some, uh, some integrated uh, estimate. So P weighted energy on sigma tau two is actually controlled by P weighted energy on sigma tau one. Additionally, this P minus one weighted energy. So you have to decrease, uh, uh, decrease a bit uh, of this, uh, decrease a bit for this P weight, this P minus one weight uh, energy. If you integrate in time, it's also controlled by the initial energy. And this is quite useful estimate in the sense that if you simply use a mean value principle for this estimate, for p between this uh, between zero and two, you can get tau to the minus two decay for p equal to zero energy in terms of p equal to two energy of the scalar field. Okay, this is immediate. So uh, and it's uh, it's quite um, it's quite efficient. Uh, uh, okay, given this kind of weak decay, uh, what what else can you do? How to achieve uh, further decay? So let, let me just assume that uh, this scalar field to be supported on a fixed L mode, then the scalar wave equation becomes, uh, becomes of this form. So you can see that this, uh, just recall that L modes, higher L means you have faster decay. So in some sense, you have to use this, uh, use this eigenvalue to get faster decay for this L mode. And this, this spectrum gap, we, we, we can use in this way to commute this equation with this curve V hat 
i times this curve v equal v hat is an operate equals to mu inverse r square v. Sorry. Uh, okay. So this curve v hat i psi we denoted as psi i, and this set, so this satisfies this wave equation. <clears throat> And you can see that uh, here, this angular part or this eigenvalue part actually decrease as I increase, right? Um, okay, so, um, so you can also see that this eigenvalue is actually, so this eigenvalue is uh, non-negative if and only if this i is less than l, in some sense, this means that you can do it for, for all i less than l and uh, for, for this r p estimates with p between zero and two. And you can get that, you can use the similar method, similar uh, estimate as, uh, as in the previous page to achieve that p equal to zero energy of uh, psi i is, has tau to the minus two decay in terms of P equal to two energy of psi i. Moreover, you can see that uh, P equal to zero energy of psi i is actually bound, uh, sorry, P equal to two energy of psi i minus one is actually bounded by equal to P equal to zero energy of psi i. So somehow uh, you, you then have a hierarchy such that eventually you achieve tau to the minus two minus two L decay for P equal to zero energy of psi zero or psi by the P equal to two energy of psi L. So in, by, by doing so, then you get uh, faster decay for the P equal to zero energy of psi for if psi is supported on an L node. And uh, um, to achieve faster decay, so there's an abstraction coming from the right hand side here. Uh, this, this abstraction comes from uh, the error terms when you do RP estimates. So this kind of uh, error terms actually can only be bounded if and only if the right hand side is like O of R inverse, not O of R one coefficient. So um, the, fortunately there is, uh, there is a unique combination in this form so it's, it's, it's a combination of this psi i for any i between zero and l, such that uh, this combination, this psi tilde l, satisfy uh, such an equation, this equation one, with the right hand side being O of r inverse times the right hand side, this psi tilde j. And you can view this as a transport equation for this red colored part, this curve v hat acting on psi tilde l. Um, yeah, this, this is a good property that, so that you can actually extend the RP estimate because in, in the previous page, uh, so this actually coming from this, uh, the, the eigenvalue part or the, uh, the, 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 the Laplacian part. So if this does not exist anymore, so if you somehow you, you have, you do, have, do not have this term, then you, you, you don't need to worry about this term at all. So, so that, that means you can simply extend the P and eventually it turns out that you can extend for uh, the RP estimate, the RP hierarchy for P less than five, uh, strictly less than five. And it, by doing so, then you, you actually improve the decay, this tau to the minus two minus two L, the, which corresponding to uh, uh, P equal to two, then this gives extra uh, minus three plus epsilon decay. So this is like tau to the minus five minus two L plus epsilon for P equal to zero energy of this psi in terms of P equal to five minus epsilon energy of this psi tiered L. And some standard uh, uh, argument can, can be applied to see that any kind of, when you apply this partial tau derivative once, then you achieve extra tau to the minus two decay for the energy. So uh, if, you, if you say it in terms of the point wise, you get this V to the minus one 
tau to the minus two minus L minus J plus epsilon over two for this partial tau derivative, act, partial tau J acting on this little psi, this scalar field. Uh, let's just um, remark that uh, actually here, this is almost sharp already in terms of the price law. So uh, in, in the region that R is, uh, is bigger than this tau, so it's like uh, when you are sufficiently close, sufficiently far away from the event horizon, let's say. Um, right, but uh, if you remember that we should gain extra tau to the minus L in finite radius region, right? So how to achieve this uh, uh, in finite radius region? So the key point is actually to define some new scalar, this phi L, this is uh, some HL, RL inverse times psi, such that we can recast the wave equation of this uh, psi L uh, as this form. So in this form, we have, uh, we have isolated this uh, radial derivative part on the le left-hand side and put extra time derivative part onto, uh, to the right-hand side. So this H uh, is just some uh, expression that you can explicitly written down. And the point being that uh, uh, by doing such a rescaling, you have then use, you, you, you then eliminate all this uh, zeroth order term of this psi or this phi L. So we, 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 we uh, right, okay. So this HL RL is actually um, is it is a zero energy mode solution for this uh, wave equation for uh, L mode. So this this is like a very uh, interesting uh, fact. And then uh, this it's like a similar hierarchy of uh, of the the work of Antilopoulos, Aritakis, and Gadget. They, they treat this, uh, they treat this um, equation by doing some uh, elliptic estimates to achieve faster decay. And here we, we do slightly different, but it's, it's more or less the same. Uh, you, can, you, can, you can achieve a hierarchy of elliptic estimates because the right-hand side now contains this partial tau derivative. In that sense, um, you recall that for any partial tau derivative, you have faster tau inverse decay. So in some sense, the right hand side actually decays faster in tau, and then you can you can hope that you can you can get faster decay for this derivative as well, and also for this phi L, um, and then you get extra decay for this phi L. You put it back into the right hand side. Now the right hand side contains far, even faster decay, and the, then iterate until you cannot do any more. Eventually, what you can achieve is this phi L, which is more or less like O of R to the minus L acting on this little psi has extra tau to the minus L decay compared to this little psi. So the total decay rate is actually the same because this tau to the minus L decay is actually obtained by, by, by the price of introducing extra R to the L growth, right? By doing so, we then achieve almost sharp decay that means this little psi has decayed uh, V to the minus one R to the L tau to the minus two minus two L plus epsilon. So in finite R radius, then you, you, you immediately see that this is the almost price law, the almost sharp decay. Additionally, you can integrate this wave equation uh, from horizon to get this uh, partial row derivative acting on this for phi L it has faster decay compared to this Vafi L. And, uh, and uh, let me just remark that the above uh, decay estimates, they crucially depend on the full of the potential. The potential in this wave equation is actually like O of R to the minus three. But if you have a different potential, then the full of actually is different. And uh, and the this kind of decay actually holds for uh, for any like uh, big or equal to L modes, so you don't need to restrict to a fixed mode. Okay, uh, eventually let me show you how to derive the sharp decay. 
So this is achieved by uh, by global conservation law. So uh, the wave equation for this L equal to zero mode, because we, we, we talked about, um, we have mentioned many times that um, higher L means higher decay. So we just focus on the uh, lowest L mode um, uh, at present. Uh, the wave equation for L equal to zero mode is in this form. And you can simply integrate in this, um, in, in the space-time region, uh, bounded by sigma, in the space-time region, uh, okay. Then you get you get a flux on this null infinity of this radiation field equals to the right hand side being this uh, integral of this h psi on the initial hypersurface. Uh, you see that the, the the flux on event horizon actually vanishes because uh, this delta vanishes on event horizon. <clears throat> So in this, by doing so, you actually get that the integral of radiation field along this now infinity can be calculated in terms of the initial data, right? And then uh, this, this, this can be used to, to derive the precise asymptotics of uh, this V psi and then uh, this psi itself. So uh, we, we rewrite this wave equation Again, this yv psi equal to this minus two mr to the minus three uh, psi. We integrate along this uh, uh, along this y direction, or uh, uh, integrate inward uh, from this uh, initial hypersurface. So then you get uh, the the value of this v cubed v psi at uv minus the value of that quantity at, at this initial point equals to the integral of the right hand side. The integral being this uh, more or less like m times this v cubed over r to the uh, r to the three times uh, big psi. And then you can push push this integral to push this integral to null infinity by introducing further terms, the uh, flux term on this uh, sigma tau naught on this on, on this section and also some uh, space-time integral between these two hypersurfaces. But those, uh, those turned out to be a low order in the sense that they have some decay. And then what you get is this, this integral is actually equal to this minus 8m uh, uh, times the integral of this radiation field along this now infinity plus low order terms. Okay, then you use, uh, you, can, you can translate this uh, to the integral along this uh, entire null infinity starting from tau naught plus extra terms. The, here you introduce some extra integral along null infinity from this tau to tau to infinity, but that part is you, you can easily achieve decay. So I have included in it into this low order term. So you, by doing so that you get that asymptotics of this v psi or v cubed v psi at any point here can be calculated in terms of the asymptotics of v cubed v psi at initial hypersurface, this term, plus an integral of the uh, radiation field along this now infinity, okay. And this is, this is in turn calculated in terms of the initial data. So in total, this asymptotics of this v psi is calculated in terms of the initial data plus low order terms with faster decay. And uh, the remaining thing is uh, to achieve uh, the sharp decay for psi starting from the asymptotics of V psi. This is achieved by uh, simply integrating uh, outward along the V direction. So you integrate from some uh, hypersurface here. Um, then uh, this is standard, uh, this is somehow simple. Uh, eventually you can get this uh, asymptotics for this leader psi in, uh, on the right hand side of uh, this hypersurface. And uh, in, on the left hand side of this hypersurface, then because of this, uh, uh, because of the faster decay of the partial, toe, partial row derivative act, acting on psi, you, you can easily see that the asymptotics of psi simply propagate from, from, um, from this hypersurface into the interior region, into, into this uh, left-hand side region, okay. So this is then uh, a global asymptotics 
for the uh, for the lead up sign. Uh, right. Okay. Eventually, let, let me just uh, discuss a bit about the Tarkovsky equation or the TME. The Tarkovsky equation, the TME incur. Uh, this is is um, like this form. So this is a spin weighted wave operator on curve acting on this psi s, and then you have uh, some uh, first order derivative terms. So I I have uh, uh, I have just uh, compressed some first order derivative terms and write down the most important one, this red color terms, this partial t derivative. Uh, you know that uh, in evolution equations, uh, depending on the coefficient of this partial t derivative, you could have damping or, or anti-damping, right? But the coefficient, this, this coefficient actually changes the sign uh, in, in, the, in, in some radius outside the black hole exterior. So in some sense, uh, you have damping and anti-damping in different regions uh, uh, by separate, separated by some fixed uh, uh, R hypersurface. So uh, this causes some problem for this Tokoski equation. And additionally, there is no reaction. So you cannot derive the, um, you cannot define the stress energy tensor then you can, it's, it's somehow difficult to use the energy method to treat this wave equation. <coughs> and and the, the solution is, is to do some, uh, some, some kind of, uh, to apply some kind of uh, uh, operators to this wave equation. We, we, let, let me just consider this S equal to minus two case for the linear rest gravity. If you define this little psi minus S i, to be this operator act, acting, uh, acting on this psi minus s zero or psi minus s itself, i times with i less than, less than s frac, then you can derive a system of equations for this psi i so, uh, with the right hand side. Uh, and in particular for the last equation, the, the, the right hand side contains uh, a comma factor this angular momentum A. So this actually vanishes in the Swatchard case or in Resonance, sorry, not Resonance, in, in Swatchard case. And in, by, by doing so then, uh, the re, so the last equation is actually the classic reg wheel equation for the linear rise gravity. It's decoupled from the, from, the, from the other two equations and it's more like the scalar wave equation then you can simply do some standard estimates. Uh, I mean, you can employ, you can employ the method of treating the scalar wave equation and achieve estimates for this wave equation and then go back to the rest to achieve eventually the, this psi s itself. And this, this, uh, this, this kind of transformation is related to Chandrasekhar's uh, transformation and it's first applied uh, in the paper of the famous Horsky Ronensky in treating this uh, linear stability problem of Swatchard, but in Kerr it's it's coupled. So um, so uh, if you if a is not zero, so also you do not have any uh, decoupled equation anymore. However, you get you get weakly coupled systems for sufficiently small a over m. So this wave system will be weakly coupled, but by using this weakly, by using this weakly, uh, weak coupling, then eventually uh, we can derive this uh, this uh, energy and Morawitz estimates for the coupled wave system. That um, it's like uh, for sufficiently small a, then you get energy bond and the Morawitz estimates. <coughs> And this, this, this has uh, some applications uh, in linear stability and uh, nonlinear stability. So it's crucial in, uh, in any kind of uh, linear stability or, or nonlinear stability using the energy method. And it's likely to be uh, valid to, uh, for subjunct curve as well. So this is actually proven for S equal to zero by uh, the firm Sronensky, Charlotte Rossman um, for scalar wave. But it's it's um, it remains open for as not equal to zero case. 
um, yeah, that's one of the ingredient to achieve the sharp decay. So uh, let me let me uh, maybe first list some uh, list of my results uh, on this uh, Tokoski master equation on sweatshirt with uh, Lin Zhang. So this appeared uh, uh, this appeared this year. For for this spin s components psi s solving this uh, Tokoski master equation on sweatshirt you have this kind of asymptotics. So you can explicitly write down this r to the minus two s frac times this psi plus s frac component. It has this asymptotics uh, mu to the s frac uh, times this v, the forward time plus this two s frac plus one times tau over this, uh, over this polynomial. And then times the, some, some q in it, this is some this is some uh, this is some constant that can be calculated from the initial data, and the rest being the being being uh, the rest has faster decay compared to this decay, and for psi minus s the decay is slightly different. You do not have this mu to the s frac, and somehow the decay in the, in this in this fraction you you inter, you interchange this uh, uh, v and the tau. And then you get the decay. And additionally, because of this mu to the s frac um, coefficient, this vanishes on event horizon. So you get that uh, on event horizon, if s frac is non-zero, you get extra decay, extra tau inverse decay for this spin plus s component. And if the spin s components are supported on high modes on Big uh, on big or equal to L modes, then you have extra extra decay, extra R to the L minus S frac tau to the minus L plus S frac decay. Uh, additionally, you have this uh, in, in the precise asymptotics, you have some function, this HSL, this HSL times L R to the L minus S is quite similar to the previous one, this HL times RL, for the uh, for the s equal to zero case, that is the zero energy mode solution to the to the Tokoski equation. And additionally, you have some constant which is only dependent on l and the uh, uh, s frac. So, oh, um, uh, so uh, this result actually proves the price law for for on sweatshirt. And it, uh, the, the decay rates, the uh, asymptotics are, are explicit, explicitly written down in terms of the initial data information. And uh, uh, this, 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 this formula four, um, a variant of formula four uh, also holds for direct field. In that case, you, you do not have this uh, channel second transformation, but uh, anyway, it can be done. This is another joint work with uh, Zhang, and in Kerr, uh, this appeared on this uh, Tuesday on archive. So as, again, for this spin as components solving this uh, Tokoski master equation on Kerr, but we assume a bin estimate for the Tokoski equation on substreaming Kerr because uh, in some in some cases the this kind of bin estimates are not proven; they are only proven for slowly rotating Kerr. Um, Anyway, under this assumption, then you get more or less the same the same decay as in the sweatshirt case. So the decay is, is the same. And uh, let, let's just talk about this psi minus s. The decay is the same as the spin uh, as, as in the sweatshirt case. And this q in it can also be calculated in terms of the initial data. But for the spin plus s component, it's slightly different and a bit more complicated. And uh, um, and Fm here actually it equals to this mu to the s frac plus uh, this Am. M is the s smooth mode. It's eigenvalue of, of the uh, of the um, uh, exit perturbation. Am times O of I inverse. So uh, you can see that if Am equal to zero and s non zero, then on event horizon this Fm actually vanishes. That means you should have faster decay for this spin plus s component on event horizon. And that's the case that you actually achieve extra tau inverse decay 
for, for spin plus s component on event horizon in that case. Okay, so um, let, me, let me give a brief uh, overview of the ingredients of the, in the proof in the current case. So in the current case, we use the spin uh, weighted spheric harmonic mode decomposition. This is somehow not quite natural because the Tukowski master equation is separable uh, if you use spin weighted spheroid harmonics. However, it, it's, it's useful because of, uh, we, we need the uh, explicit eigenvalue of the some spin weighted spheroid uh, Laplacian. And then um, there is a drawback that you have some, uh, some coupling with other modes because of this a square sine theta square partial tau, to partial, partial tau square plus IAS cosine theta partial tau operating in the Tukowski master equation. And this coupling uh, is also traded um, in Angelopoulos, Arutakis, uh, and Gadget's paper uh, on scalar wave uh, in curved space times. So all these estimates for these modes are actually coupled. So you have to derive uh, coupled estimates and trade the coupling. Uh, then we also make use of uh, some larger wave systems. So uh, previously we derived, we, we, we just, uh, I, I just show you that this, this little psi minus si uh, for i up to s frac, but to achieve better decay, you have to derive this, uh, this uh, large wave system for this i less or equal to this 2s frac to achieve suitable decay for the entire uh, <coughs> spin plus minus s components. And to trade these modes, you have to uh, commute further with some suitable operator uh, such that eventually this i is less or equal to L plus S for any L mode. And to, to, to get um, similar to the scalar wave case on Swatchard I discussed uh, uh, earlier, to extend RP hierarchy to P less than five, you have to define new scalars. And these are this psi two, the minus S frac L, such that the right hand side are all of, or, uh, all of our inverse coefficients. And this turned out to be uh, quite important to, to, to derive these coupled RP estimates. And eventually, um, again, this global, global conservation law uh, for, the, for, for, the in, uh, for the now integral, um, now infinity integral of the radiation field is important in deriving this precise asymptotics for the Tukowski operate, for the Tukowski scalars on curved space times. And, uh, and last, so um, since this, this or many estimates are actually first derived for one of these spin plus, uh, for one of these spin plus minus S components. And uh, um, then we use this Tokoski star basic identities to achieve the estimates for the other spin uh, component from, from the, the uh, yeah, from, 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 from the previous one. So these identities are actually 2s frac order of uh, differential equations between this spin plus minus s components. So here, this s ring and s, uh, s ring prime and s ring, they are like angular operators and yv are uh, ingoing and uh, outgoing uh, operators. So they are quite important in deriving uh, like uh, suitable decay estimates, the, the, uh, the syntactic profiles, and so on, yeah. Okay, so in the end, I think I'm running out of time. So let me just uh, say a few words about the uh, some future future problems which can we expect to be uh, to to be done. So we we do not treat the higher modes in curve case um, in the paper. So, but we expect because of this. Coupling, I, in particular, this IAS cosine theta partial tau derivative, which um, which then means this asymptotic of uh, asymptotics of L mode has to be determined by the partial tau derivative acting on the L minus one mode. 
Therefore, so uh, actually the decay rates, the sharp decay rates should uh, uh, simply grow nearly in the L parameter. And also you can, uh, you can try to think about uh, the strong cosmic censorship, but for the, for the linear rest gravity on rest not strong or on curve. And uh, additionally, you can, you can think of some nonlinear models so for instance, uh, the, the, the same linear wave equation with uh, this power, like uh, power law, uh, nonlinear terms, this plus minus psi gamma for sufficiently small initial data. This has been achieved by, uh, by Dohanilu, but it's sharper, it's sharp upper bounds of decay. And what we expect is we can use this idea of global conservation law to, 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 uh, to apply it to this uh, semi-linear wave equation. And the price is that we do not get a global conservation law, but we achieve an almost global conservation law in the sense that the error terms coming from the red can side, when you integrate the wave equation in the space-time region, the, the, the integral of the red can side just contribute all of epsilon gamma terms Right, so it's it's like low order compared to the initial data. So in some sense, then generically you can achieve the sharp decay. Okay, that's all. Thanks. Okay. <clears throat> okay. Any question or comment? Uh, I have a question. <clears throat> sure. <Let's see. clears throat> uh. When you consider the decay in curves this time, uh, you yeah. didn't <clears throat> assume that uh, the angular moment is small. Yeah, right. Uh, it's it's a technical problem. Uh, it's technical one yes. because somehow it's as I said here. If you if you assume a to be large, then it's like a, a strong coupling system, and somehow it's more complicated. Even in the scalar wave case, uh, the paper of the famous Romanski, Sean Rossman, they used a, a so-called uh, mode of stability result, whatever it is, and, and together with the slowly rotating curve mechanism and uh, some uh, very clever continuity argument. Yeah. Then eventually they achieved this. And there are some recent work of Charlotte Rossman and Rita. Um, they have achieved some estimates uh, in some, you know, some some kind of these estimates for large A, but it's it's restricted to some. I think it's restricted to some bounded frequencies. So they they do mode decomposition and then they consider different frequency regions. And what they can do in the first paper of their series is they can they can achieve these estimates for bounded frequencies. Okay. But it's a technical one because you, you have to use the mode of stability such that you do not have resonance on the real axis. Um, yeah. Okay. So <clears throat> you have mentioned that the, uh, the strong cosmic censorship conjecture. Uh, yeah. So uh, can you? <clears throat> Can you show some the progress from event horizon to the Koch horizon? Oh well, uh, the, I have not done anything. I mean the, for lo this, the lower the lower bounds of the decay in the event horizon. Uh, okay. To... Uh, yeah, it's it's included here. Oh, sorry. It's included <laughs> in the main statement. For instance, in Kerr. So this actually also holds on event horizon. Yeah. This holds uh, uh, on the event horizon and the, in the exterior region of, of the black hole. So uh, then you have sharp decay, sharp, uh, including sharp up lower bounds of decay for this spin plus minus s components. And uh, what you can expect is to use sim such estimates to consider, um, you know, to consider the strong cosmic censorship for the linear rest gravity, for instance. Okay. You you uh, would expect some do, kind do you of mean like, that the progress uh, from the lower bounds in the event horizon, uh, <clears throat> we can 
we can uh, conclude that the uh, some some singularity in the uh, uh, okay. Relevance. So so I'm not saying that I can con conclude. It's like uh, some yeah. future direction. Uh, there are some progress already in the current case. But so for instance. Um, uh, I think uh, Jan Spierski and Jonas Luke, they have a paper for scalar waveform current. They assume okay. some, um, some upper bounds of decay and lower bounds of decay on the event horizon. And then they, 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 they treat this wave equation, scalar wave equation in the black hole interior region and eventually achieved, uh, uh, achieved, some, kind of uh, achieved some kind of blow up result for the first derivative of the scalar field transfers to the Hoche horizon. Well, for scalar field? For scalar field. Um, uh, you mean the scalar field in curve space time? Yeah, in curve space time. But uh, uh, you can expect that, you know, given this lower bound of decay, you can you can try to, you know, okay. try to, to try to do similar things for, for linearized gravity <clears throat> on okay. curve. Okay, thank you. Thank you so much. Uh, any questions or comments? Uh, even though, <clears throat> let's uh, thanks again for uh, Dr. CMR's talk. Thank you very much. See? Yeah, thanks.